Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1981 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Detroit Tigers and the California Angels at Anaheim Stadium. On the mound for Detroit is Bruce Robbins, whose record is 4-5 and five with a 5.21 ERA. And pitching for the Angels today is Dave Frost, whose record is 4-4 four and four with a 4.34 ERA. Happy 4th of July, everybody, and uh, we are looking at the standings here. On July 4th, we are uh, two games above 500 and only seven games back. Uh, we keep losing. We've lost two in a row. Two games that maybe you could say we should have won, but we did not against the Brew Crew. Um, and Baltimore is trying to give us a chance. They've lost six in a row. And uh, we have not been able to take advantage of that. We seem to be stuck right where we're at. And meanwhile, it looks like New York is really making a run uh, for the East as they, at one point, were in fifth place. And uh, they've picked up the pace and look like um, maybe they might be the odds-on favorite to pull it out. Um, so having said that, we're going to take a look at the calendar here. And um, as I've mentioned a few times before, after this four-game series against the Angels, uh, we have um, a couple of days off, but the All-Star Game is coming up. It's going to be a live event on YouTube. I will be in the American League. Dave, uh, who is from uh, Not Your Status Quo, uh, a, a video channel, uh, which uh, basically uh, is uh, all about... Uh, Marvel and DC, a lot of Star Wars universe stuff uh, on there. Um, their videos are fun. They're a lot of funny guys. Uh, he is going to be my opponent. He will be the National League. We're going to play live on uh, YouTube. We haven't picked the exact date and time, but we're going to make sure everyone um, who wants to see that game will know when it will be, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. So I uh, just wanted to say that. Now, on top of that, I have made some roster changes. I have made a trade. I got rid of Dave Tobik, who we had uh, designated to AAA, and I traded him to Toronto. He automatically became their closer on that team, and we got some cash money in return, which we desperately needed. They didn't have anybody I wanted. We, I did not want to take on any other contracts. Um, our cash was down to about $350,000, somewhere in that range. And so um, the extra 120 is going to help us out. It's going to help us make a couple um, uh, offers to players who are going to, going to be going to arbitration. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. There was also another trade uh, yesterday, which was uh, Bill Schrader for Leon Roberts between Milwaukee and uh, Philadelphia. Milwaukee uh, look, looks like with their two victories against us are going for it. So... Let's go ahead and get today's game started. I also made a couple other roster changes. I'll show you those to you here momentarily. As always, if you enjoy this content, like and or subscribe. I appreciate that. Bruce Robbins on the mound for the Tigers. We'll look, take a look at him momentarily. Um, and here we go. We brought Roger Weaver back up from AAA. He's been a big part of our team the last two seasons. And uh, we gave him a little bit of break in AAA tr and uh, tried to work it out. He did really well in the minors. And we moved Tom Filer into the number four position as we sent Bryn Smith uh, down to AAA. So we're going to give Tom Filer uh, an opportunity to make a few starts before the end of the season. And uh, maybe we'll see Bryn Smith back in a relief role before the end of this season, or he'll definitely be in the running for a... Uh, starting rotation spot in 1982. Uh, the lineup versus Dave Frost, who is a righty. Here it is. We've made one big change. We brought up Glenn Wilson from AAA. He's only been in AAA for 20 games, um, but he was batting 323 in AA before we advanced him to AAA. And he's hit three home runs in those 20 games in AAA. And we moved him right into the right field position. Strong defensive, an awesome arm. Um, I brought him up a little bit sooner than I really anticipated. I do like Jeffrey Leonard in right field. But what this is going to do for us, um, as we have Jeffrey Leonard at DH, it's going to allow us to um, 
not re-sign Gary Hancock, who's been very, very good for us. He was our team MVP last year, and he's been okay this season, but um, I think we need to look to the future, and Glenn Wilson is part of that. Also, Jeffrey Leonard, who can play right field, is part of that as well. So, uh, And Reggie's going to be on the bench. Okay, so a lot going on today as we're playing in Anaheim, right down the road from Mickey Mouse. Um, defensively. Wow, they have some defensively poor players. Let's take a look here at the Tigers lineup, and then we'll look at Dave Frost a little closer. Ricky Henderson leading off, playing center field today. Batting second. At second base is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting third is Kirk Gibson in left field. Batting cleanup at shortstop is Alan Trammell. Batting fifth and DHing is Jeffrey Leonard. Batting 6th at first base is Greg Brock. Batting 7th and catching is Lance Parrish. Batting 8th in right field, making his Major League debut, is Glenn Wilson. And batting ninth at third base is Tom Brookins. Dave Frost pitching for the Angels. Last season injury plagued. He went 7-4, coming off that 16-10 uh, uh, career year in 1979. This year he's making his 12th start, 4-4, four and four, a 4.34 ERA, uh, 27 walks and 27 strikeouts in 74 innings pitch, 281 opponents batting average. He has not completed a game this season. Okay, so here we go. Take a look at the Angels defensive alignment. Left field looks like it's going to be a opportunity for us with Joe Rudy and their center fielder is Pepe Mangual who also is poor defensively. All right, Ricky Henderson leading off. Was caught stealing for like the, the 12th time yesterday. Here he grounds out to Dave Frost. One down. Next up, Sweet Lou Whitaker. Whitaker ground ball to short. Lubertich makes the play. That's the second out. It's going to leave it up to Gibby to get something going. And an infield single by Gibson. Puts him on first. Trammell, who's been struggling a little bit lately. Uh, who's your catcher? It is Daryl Miller. He's got a weak arm. Below average. So we're going to try to have Gibson steal. It's early. Let's try to make something happen against the righty Dave Frost. Thrown right down the middle for a strike, but Gibson does steal second base. That is his 12th stolen base on the season. So Gibby's in scoring position for Tram. And a base hit up the middle will score Gibson, an RBI single for Trammell. And we're on top one to nothing. Good start to the game for the Tigers. Jay Lee is up next, and he flies out to center field. I'm still not really, that's not really working for me, Jay Lee. Jay Leo, there should be something there, but Jay Nard. <laughs> I guess we could do, go with Jay Nard as uh, Jay Nard flies out to center field. That's not really going to get it done either. We're, we're, we're going to table that. Okay, so here we go. Top, uh, bottom of the first inning. Tigers have that one nothing lead, couple base hits there. Let's do the Angels lineup today. Batting leadoff in center field is Pepe Mangual. Batting second at second base is Bobby Gritch. Batting third at third base is Carney Lansford. Batting cleanup at first base is John Harris. Batting fifth at shortstop is Steve Lubertich. Batting sixth and DHing is Mike Brown. Batting seventh and catching is Daryl Miller. Batting eighth in right field is Dan Ford. And batting ninth in left field is Joe Rudy. Bruce Robbins on the mound. I think he had a pretty darn good start last time out. Five and a third innings. He did not. <laughs> He's been bad. What was I thinking? He only gave up one earned run. Uh, maybe that's why I think he brought his ERA down, if I, now that I think about it. Uh, but he did give up nine hits against Oakland. 
And then um, Boston uh, took him to task in the game before that. Uh, honestly, he's been pretty solid. I still have high hopes for him. He's only 21 years old. So we're not giving up on uh, Bruce Robbins yet. I project him to be in the uh, starting rotation next year unless something uh, catastrophic happens. Uh, okay, so here is the Tigers defensive alignment and you can see that big 90 out there in right field with Glenn Wilson. We are solid defensively all the way around right now, which doesn't mean much, but we'll see. With uh, Pepe Mangual leading off against the lefty Bruce Robbins. Ground ball to Trammell. Trammell tosses him out. One down. It's going to bring up Bobby Gritch. Gritch popping it up to Brookins. He makes the catch for the second out. Two down for Carney Lansford. Lansford ground ball to short. And that's going to do it. An easy 1-2-3 inning for Bruce Robbins. We go to the top of the second. Here's Greg Brock leading off. He is, uh had a base hit in every game he's appeared in so far this season. And is that another? Oh, it's going to be caught on a line by the center fielder. Uh, Pepe Mengual, and that's one down. Next up, Lance Parrish. Parrish walks. He's doing a better job of getting on base versus righties. He definitely struggles. Um, and then uh, Glenn Wilson. Here's Glenn Wilson once again, just in case you don't know much about him. Um, he, I don't. I, I should actually pull up his exact information, but I know the Tigers traded him to uh, Philadelphia. That's how we got. Um, uh, Willie Hernandez, uh, who, of course, was our Cy Young Award winner, MVP uh, of 84, uh, of 1984, and our closer. Um, so we gave him away to the Phillies, and then he did make an all-star game, but he never really um, uh, never really turned into an everyday uh, you know, player. Other than that one season, he was lights out, but uh, unfortunately, he just never really put it together. He's going to start off his career with a base hit on the right field line. He's got himself a double. So a great start for Glenn Wilson. Parrish is on third. Here is Tom Brookins batting 270 versus righties. Brookins hits it to the right side. What? That should have been a definite RBI. I cannot believe Parrish wasn't going on that. So two down, and we're back to the top of the lineup for Ricky Henderson. And Henderson walks. That was a close call. Base is loaded now for Sweet Lou. We need a big hit from Lou, betting only 253 versus righties. He does have a couple of hits against Dave Frost. And he pops it up on the infield. Second baseman Bobby Gritch makes the play and wasted opportunity there. As we leave the bags full, we go to the bottom of the second. John Harris leading off against Robbins, lefty on lefty. And Robbins gets his first K on a borderline pitch. One down. Next up is Steve Lubertich. There it is. His team leading 11th home run as he jacks it into the left field bleachers. And it's all tied at one. That was the first hit against Robbins today. It's going to bring up Mike Brown. I don't think we've seen much of him. He's a right fielder. I don't remember playing against him the first time through. But he strikes out against Robbins for the second out. So two down for catcher Daryl Miller. And Miller gets a base hit to left field on the first pitch. And an error by Gibby allows Miller to get into scoring position. So we know what that means. With two down and a uh, runner in s at second, that's pretty much a guarantee. Oh, no, he hits it right to Brookins. And Brookins makes a play. All right, well, we'll, uh, we'll take that. Get out of the inning with the score tied at one. We go to the top of the third with Kurt Gibson leading off. And Gibby gets a base hit down the right field line all the way to the wall. How is that not a guaranteed double? All right, there we go. 80% chance. We took the chance. And we were right. 
So Gibby's on second. Fourth hit for Detroit. Here's Alan Trammell. Drove in the first run, and uh, he strikes out looking on an inside pitch. It's good at bat, though. Seven pitch at bat. Dave Frost up to 55 pitches. Jeffrey Leonard up next. Well, he goes down on three. Second K for Frost. Let's see if Greg Brock can come through for us. Ground ball, base hit into center field. That's a five-game hitting streak and another RBI single. It's 2-1 to one Detroit. Tigers looking good today so far. And then Parrish takes a strike three looking. So we go to the bottom of the thirds. 2-1 to one Detroit. Here's the veteran Joe Rudy leading off. Betty 143 versus lefties. A weak pop-up on the infield. Whitaker makes the play. One down. Back to the top of the lineup now with Pepe Mangual. He hits a ground ball to short. That's two down. Now, remember, the Angels won the World Series last year in this game. So, uh, they've really fallen from grace. They're one game above 500. We're actually a better team than them. Uh, by record, at least. As uh, Gritch hits a ground ball to short. And that is the final out of the inning. So we go to the top of the fourth. Glenn Wilson. One for one in his career with that double. And he walks in this at bat. What is his... Um, I have looked at his skill set. Let's just take a quick look at that. Maybe you're interested. Uh, he doesn't really hit and run that well. Sack fly, you can count on. He's not a bunter. Hit and run is not great. Not really good base runner. Um, yeah, I mean, he hits great contact versus lefties. But Anyway, okay, so Wilson walks on first base. Here is Tommy B. We're going to let him swing away this time. We let him have him try to hit to the right side last time. Oh, no. There's a tailor-made double play. Oh, uh, Brookins. I mean, he's kind of our third baseman of the future now. I was really thinking we might have something with Mickey Hatcher, but Mickey Hatcher's just been god-awful. As Ricky Henderson gets a base hit to left. I mean, every time we try to go for two with Ricky, he always gets thrown out. Joe Rudy, 63 arm, and he's out, of course. Like, there's no chance to advance with Ricky Henderson. It's less than 50-50 every time I try. Even though it said 80%, it was really probably like 10%. And, again, keep in mind, a runner just got thrown out in the base pass. So you know that means a bad moon's rising. As Lansford walks right on cue. And he steals second. And the ground ball to third. Brookins tosses out John Harris. There's one down. It's going to bring up Luby. That's what I would call him. Betting 351 versus lefties. Line drive to center. It's caught, and Lansford will tag up and take third. So it's going to be up to Mike Brown here to drive him in with two down. Brown ball to first. Hey, there we go. Brock makes the play. Get out of another jam. Bruce Robbins, he's been in a couple of them, but he's uh, looking okay so far. Only two hits given up. We're going to the top of the fifth. Sweet Lou leading off. He's two for seven against Frost. He flips it right into the middle of the two outfielders. It's caught by the left fielder, who was Joe Rudy, right? Yes, so one down. And then Gibby strikes out swinging. So two down for Trammell. And Trammell pops it up. So one, two, three inning for Dave Frost. He needed that to get things under control. We go to the bottom of the fifth. The Tigers are up by one. Daryl Miller batting 636 versus lefties. What is that? 636. Someone's doing the math in their head. They're telling. They're saying it out loud. Um, he is two for... What? Oh, I'm sorry. Seven for 11. Numbers are hard. Okay, Daryl Miller. 
Oh, he's going to strike out looking. Good job by Robbins. That's three Ks for Bruce. Next up is Dan Ford. Ford hits it right back to Robbins. Robbins tosses him out at first. Two down. Next up is Joe Rudy batting 327 overall, but only 125 versus lefties. And Robbins strikes him out for his fifth K. And we're going to the top of the sixth. Let's take a look at the in-game stats. Player of the game so far. Uh, do we give it to Gibby, who's two for three with the stolen base? Um, it's tough to say so far. All right, here's uh, Jeff Nard, J. Leo. I, I, I'm still, I'm struggling. Leonard, ground ball to first. There's one down. Next up is Greg Brock. Brock is a crushing it. I think I would take, as Brock coasts into second with that double, I think I would take a hitter like Brock over Jason Thompson every day of the week. Give me a player that I can count on. I love the home runs. But, um, you know, Thompson was batting two under 240 for us, if I remember it correctly. As Parrish hits a ground ball to short. Oh, Brock was running on that. And he's tossed out. That was a brain cramp. Frost now officially listed as tired with Parrish on first. Glenn Wilson, one for one on the day of the walk. And a ground ball to second. Bobby Gritch makes the play. We're going to the bottom of the sixth. Two to one. Robbins only at 52 pitches. I think I said he had five Ks, but he's only got four. Pepe Mengual leading off. Ground ball to Trammell. Alan Trammell tosses him out. One down. Here's Bobby Gritch. Now, there's probably not a lot of second baseman that I would pick over Tram uh, over Whitaker. Uh, but Bobby Gritch might be one of those players. He was pretty damn consistent. Deserves a, to be in the Hall of Fame, in my opinion, as he flies out the center field. What? What? That ball just kept carrying 420 feet over Henderson's head and the fence. And it's 2-2. Two to two. How many homers is that for Gritch? That's his 10th on the season. Nice work. Okay, so one down. Score's all tied now for Carney Lansford. Lansford shoots it into center field. That one should stay in. It does. Henderson makes the play. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, two down. Next up is John Harris. Harris base hit to right. Lefty on lefty there. Okay, so maybe this is the time where we need to keep an eye on Bruce Robbins. Steve Lubertich has already got a home run against Robbins. Ground ball to first. And that's going to do it. So the home run by Gritch ties the game at two. We go to the top of the seventh. All right, sorry. I need a little bit of drink, some purple drink. Um, Tom Brookins, 0 for 2 on the day with a strikeout. He's actually been pretty good. I mean, he's improved his defense and uh, he's been clutch a couple of times as he goes over three today. So Brookins, I do project at this point, we're, you know, we're 25 games to the end of the season. Um, Brookins, I do project to be our starting third baseman. Unless there's someone out there that's more valuable as Henderson strikes out. And uh, looks like they're bringing a new pitcher. They're gonna bring in, bring in Mike Overy. Or ovary. You can't you can't spell overreaction without ovary. That's what I usually say to women I don't like. Um, and we don't have any listen to this, so I know that we can joke. Um, so yeah, Mike Overy. Twenty fifth game. He's two and six with a three seven three ERA. Opponents have uh, a two sixty two batting average. He gets more walks than strikeouts in those forty one innings pitched. He does have a save, and he's blown a couple saves let's uh get something going against this guy what was his era 373 okay all right so sweet lou with two down steps and he strikes out that's what i get for making fun of his name we go to the bottom of the seventh bruce robbins still sitting on 67 pitches 
hard to take him out at this point as Mike Brown leads off the inning by grounding out to Trammell. Trammell to Brock. One down. Daryl Miller flying out to right field. Play made by Glenn Wilson. It's going to leave it up to Dan Ford. And Ford hits it right back to Bruce. And Bruce tosses him out. So we're going to the top of the eighth. Pretty good game. This is a... I don't mind these kind of games. It's better than a blowout. As uh, Gibby, who's two for three on the day. And that stolen base. Line drive, base hit to center field. And Gibby, we're not going to go for two. So Gibson's on first for Trammell. I think we need to let Trammell swing away. Trammell's got a base hit and the ribby. He's going to bloop it into right center field. Little duck snarf fall in. There we go. Base hit for Trammy. Gibson takes third. It's first and third, and there's nobody outs. Nobody out. Nobody plural outs. Um, okay, so Jeffrey Leonard is up. Skills. Not a hit and runner. He can sack fly. We need a sack fly minimum. So let's, let's uh, dial up a sack fly. We need to get the go-ahead run here. Let's not get too greedy. That ought to be good enough to get it done as he flies to center. Gibson tags and scores, and the Tigers are up. 3-2 to two on the uh, sack fly by Leonard. Tremel remains at first. We're going to try to have Trammell steal second base. It's only one down. Inside pitch and Trammell is tossed out. Trammell's been pretty good this year, right? Yeah, he's 15 out of 22. Which is a much better ratio than uh, Ricky. So, took a chance. Did not pay off. And Greg Brock will pop it up. And that should end the inning. So we're going to the bottom of the eighth. We have the lead now. It's three to two. We have uh, a bunch of righties coming up. I don't feel good about it with Robbins, but we're going to take a chance. Rudy, 0 for 2 on the day. I guess you could think maybe he's due. He does strike out. That's 5Ks for Robbins. Second time Rudy's gone down. Next up is Pepe Mangual. Pepe. 0 for 3, popping it up into foul ground. On the third base side, Tommy makes the play. Here's Bobby Gritch. Now, Gritch is batting 382, and he's already deposited one into the left field bleachers. So that's going to do it for Rob Bins. And we're going to bring in Roger Weaver. We haven't seen him in a little while. He did pretty good in the minors. But, uh, pitched 22 innings with that 205 ERA. Opponents only batted 215 against him. Now, he struggled this year compared to last year. Um, but we're going to count on him to get this out and to get us to the closer. So here's uh, Weaver versus Bobby Gritch. Gritch one for four against Roger Weaver. Ground ball to Trammell. And Trammell tosses him out. All right, good job by Weaver. Making his first appearance in a while in the majors. We go to the ninth. Lance Parrish will lead off against Mike Overy. And Parrish hits a long fly ball caught on the warning track. That's the first out. Next up is Glenn Wilson. Had a pretty good day today. One for two with the walk. And he rips it down the left field line. There's his second double of the game. Two hits, two doubles. We're liking this guy. We need some fresh blood, maybe. Run around second for Brookins, and Brookins comes through with a base hit. Well, Wilson score. He's got a hold. So it's first and third. We could really use a uh, insurance run here, especially after um, losing that first game of the two-game series against the uh, the Brew Crew. Uh, okay, so Henderson can hit a sack fly. It is possible. Let's see if he can come through one time. He walks. All right, we'll take that. Base is loaded. For Dave LaRoche. 
He is the closer for the Angels. Oh, maybe he's not. He doesn't have any saves this year. They're just bringing in a, a loogie. He's a lefty. 18th game. He's 4 and 1 with a 4.43 ERA. He's got 16 Ks and 22 innings pitched. 233 on base average. I mean, opponent's batting average and no saves. And uh, this is the guy. Now, we're going to play a little something different here. We are going to do a suicide squeeze. Now, oh yeah, actually, I prob probably should look and see. Uh, bunting. Oh, he's not good. That's why it's going to work. That is why it's going to work. We're going to suicide squeeze with Sweet Lou. He lays it down. And it worked. Oh, the base hit. Oh, wow. Okay, see, there we go. That's the first time this season I've even tried that. And uh, it pays off with the uh, single by Whitaker. Brings in a run. Wilson from third. Everybody moves up a bag. And now it's time for Gibby to crush it. He's three for four. The stolen base today. Bags are full, and that might be a double play. It is. That's a bummer, but we do get the uh, insurance run. It's four to two. And here we go to the ninth inning. We're going to bring in our closer, who really struggled his last time out. We got to trust him here, though. I didn't. I didn't trust him the first time, um, but uh, we took the loss regardless. And he's going to face. Carney Lansford to lead off the ninth. Ground ball by Carney. Whitaker tosses him out. There's one down. Next up is John Harris. One for three for strikeout today. And he gets a base hit to center field. All right. That run at, a runner at first doesn't mean anything. Now it does as Lubertich gets a base hit through the left side, and uh, is this the falling apart of Tom Hume? We need to guard the lines now, because an extra base hit could score the tying run. The go-ahead runs at the plate with Mike Brown. And Brown is going to get a bloop base hit. Oh, it's going to be caught by Gibson! That looked like a for sure duck snort into left center field, but it hung up just long enough for Gibby to catch it, I guess. So that's going to be the second out. It's going to be down to Daryl Miller. We're going to play him straight away. He's only batting 214. And he strikes him out. Great job by Hume. Making it interesting. Tigers win 42. And uh, that was a good victory. I'm curious to see. Oh, here we go. Here is a trade offer. The Mariners are offering me Bruce Bochty, who I do like, but not at that price for that many years at that age for uh, Jody Reed, who could potentially be our second baseman of the future, and Scotty Madison, who uh, I know it says catcher, but he's not a catcher. He's a middle infielder. Uh, we're going to say no. That's, a, that's an interesting offer, though. Okay, let's take a look at the standings and see if, if we gained. We did! Oh my gosh, that is crazy. We are within six games with 24 to go. And we've still got four teams in front of us as Boston has now uh, tied for first. I guess they're actually ahead by percentage points, technically. Uh, so, fantastic. Let's take a look at the transactions. And nothing new, as you see the uh, Dave Tobik trade we made there. Let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the game. That was a lot of fun. We got to come up with a, a nickname for uh, Jeffrey Leonard. He's flaps down. That's his. Uh, I believe that's his uh, nickname or his moniker in um, in Major League Baseball. Let's take a look. Player of the game. We're going to give it to Gibby. He went three for five. Um, probably could also say uh, Glenn Wilson, who had two doubles to start off his career. I mean, Bruce Robbins goes to five and five. He only gave up four hits and one walk. Man, he kind of deserves it. Uh, we're going to give it to Gibby, though. He got three hits, scored three of the four runs. And um, he had that stolen base, which was important in the first, to get us off to the lead. The loss goes to Mike Overy, who's 2-7 and seven on the year. A couple of home runs by the Angels. A uh, couple solo shots. Grich got his 10th. Lubertich got his 11th. 
Cardi Lansford gets a rare stolen base, I think. Nope, he had 11. That's amazing. Okay, that's it. We're going to come back tomorrow and uh, play game two of this three-game series. Until then, everyone, have a great day.